Hello, my name's Layla and I'm a developer. And this is the last video in my intro to C Sharp series. Well done for getting this far. I'm so proud of you. In this video, we're going to build on the work we did in our last video using collections. And this time we're going to look at how you can query them specifically with something called link. And that stands for language integrated query. And it's really cool. And I'm going to show you some basics with it. So let's head on over to code and take a look. To start us off, I've created a list of cheeses. This is just following on from the code in the last video on collections. And we have a cheese here and I've added some new properties to it. We have strength and we have price. We have a new type here as well. I've introduced you to a decimal and that's just one sort of numerical type we have in C sharp and a decimal is very, very, very precise and what you would normally use for financial stuff. Uh, some other types that look like a decimal would be doubles and floats, but today we're going to stick with a decimal. If we go and have a look at where we create it, you'll notice that I have this M after my decimal number. That is M for money, and that lets this know that this is a decimal value I'm giving it. It would be F for a float and D for a double. So you have to be a little bit precise when you are using these numerical types. And then this last one here is an integer. Now we've got this list and we're going to ask our user to do some stuff with it. And we're actually going to print this list of cheese out and ask them which cheese they would like more details of. So let's start with a question. Let's ask them which cheese they want more details of. And then we just need to print out our cheeses. We're going to use a for each loop again. We'll use a for each loop once again. Told you we'd be using these a lot. And this time we're iterating over our cheese list and we're going to write out the ID of our cheese and its name. We're not going to put the rest of the information. That's what we're gonna get the user to request. So we just need to get an input from the user and that's going to be our cheese name. So we're gonna search based on the name. Now, if we didn't use link, we'd have to go and loop over each one of these uh, cheeses in our collection and see which one had a name that matched our user inputted name. But we have these awesome helper libraries called link. Behind the scenes, they're gonna do some looping and some other clever stuff that makes them very performant. Uh, so, Let's go ahead and try one. The first thing I'm going to show you is how you can check if our cheese name is in our list. We're going to use a method called any and we'll do an if statement because any returns true or false. So if and else, now we've laid out our if else statement. Let's go and put our any in. So we're gonna use our cheese list dot any, and now we're going to give it something called an expression. Sometimes you'll hear it called a lambda, but it's like a, a function within a function. So what does that look like? Well, we get a variable and I'm gonna call this cheese because that's going to make it clear. I'm going to say for each cheese in my cheese list, and I can call this anything, but it is going to be a cheese in my cheese list. I want you to get the cheese with the name equal to cheese name. So this is going to go and look through our collection of cheeses. And if there is a cheese in here with a name that matches uh, the user input, it will return true and go into this if statement. So what happens if that is false? Well, it's going to go down here and we're going to tell the user that we don't have that cheese. 
But if it's true, we're gonna get that cheese and then print its price and strength. So how do we get a cheese out of our cheese list? Well, we know it's gonna be a cheese, so we can call it cheese. Now that could be a var, but I'm going to be very explicit just so you know what our statement is going to return. So we're gonna do our cheese list. This time we're gonna use first or default. Now there is a first, and you can use first and you need to either know absolutely for sure that your item is in that collection, otherwise your code will blow up. Not physically, but you know, there'll be some errors. Or you use some try catch error handling. But we're gonna use first or default. It's a safe way to use it. We are going to use another expression. We know that cheese list contains cheeses, so we can say cheese, but let me just change that. That could be C, it doesn't matter. You will most often see expressions and lambdas written with single character variable names. And then this is just gonna look exactly the same as above. And we're going to get our cheese out. This is going to say, oh, this could, um, you know, return a default value if we can't find it. So it's warning you that this is not a safe route, but I've already told you that if it's not in there, it's going to return the default response. So you need to handle that, but we're not worried about unhappy paths today. Then we're going to print the cheese name, strength and price to the console. You can see I've just made our price to string so it works and we don't need to do that with an int. It will just automatically become a stringified response. All right, shall we run this and see if it works? So ignore the warnings. That's just the compiler trying to be helpful. Uh, I think I would like details of pineapple cheese. Okay, it costs 3.5 pounds. It's quite pricey, but it's worth it. And we could format that string to show that with a zero and all sorts of things, but we're not gonna worry about that now. And it has a strength of one. Cool, so that worked. What about if I choose a cheese that's not in there? So let's run that again. Um, what cheese isn't there? Gruyere. Oh. They don't have that cheese, so that's working. Now, I will just remind you that our strings are case sensitive. So we need to make sure that these are case insensitive. So putting things like dot to lower on both sides here, we need to do it down here too, is going to allow our user to put any type of capitalization. Uh, so just remember that when you are working with strings, they are pesky. Okay, so let's see what else we can do with link. How about we get all the cheeses that have a strength of X value? Okay, so let's ask our user for what strength cheese they would like. We'll ask them to choose a strength between one and five, and then we'll give them a list of all the cheeses that have that corresponding strength. So we will need an input from them. That's going to be a string, and we'll need to convert that into an int. And we did that in the last video using something called a try pass. Now, a try pass is going to return a bool. So we'll say is int, and that tells us whether it's successful or not. And then we use int.trypass. And now we're going to pass in our strength string. And then it's going to give us out an int called strength if it's successful. And this will allow us to do some error handling, which we should do everywhere. But remember, I've skipped over it. And don't worry, we're just learning at the moment. But 
we'll assume for this case that this has returned us an int because we've already seen how we do if else statements around try passes and we're going to get a new collection back of all the cheeses that satisfy the value that may just be a collection of one it could be a collection of five it could be a collection of none now we could also check that this number is between one and five but we're not going to worry about that now we're just going to look at link so this is going to be a list of cheese and we'll say the cheese by strength is equal to now we're going to go back into our cheese list and now we're going to use where now this is a new method from link and we're going to use yet another lambda so we can go c c dot strength is equal to the strength we got out of our try pass now this has errored and that's because just like when we did some stuff with our arrays, this is now a type of I enumerable because we haven't told link to make this into a list. It may be that we want to do some more queries on it, or maybe we want it as an array. So this is why it's squiggly, but we want a list. So let's tell it to write this to list. And you can see the squiggles have gone away. So what that does mean is that you can string where and first or default all in one line. So you can sort all by strength. You could choose one where the price is below three pounds. Whatever you need to do, you can do with link and query your data and get back exactly, or more or less, exactly the data set that you wish. So now we have our cheeses by strength. Let's print those to the screen. We'll use another for each. We'll use another for each, iterating over our new list and printing all the cheeses that satisfy that condition. Let's run it and see if it works. Okay, so let's have a look at Brie. Uh, it's five pounds 50 and has a strength of two. Um, mm, well, if I'm interested in a strong cheese, let's go with five. See, I could have Stilton or Rockfoot. What if I wanted a weaker cheese? Let's go, well, I'll just put Brie in there. Um, let's go one. You see, only pineapple cheese satisfies that low strength. And there you can see how we've written some code and it will loop over that a collection and give us the data based on an input. It's really flexible, really clever, really useful, and you are going to use that so often in your coding career. Thank you so much for watching this series on getting started with C Sharp and .NET. I barely scratched the surface of learning to code but i hope it's given you an appetite to learn more we've covered only happy paths and a lot of our code will error if our users are pesky so just remember that but i hope it's enough to get you started if you have questions pop them in the comments or you can always come and hop on a live stream with me i do stream regularly on youtube and you can come and hang out with me live well if you have liked this video please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe for notifications of new videos and live streams and thanks for watching bye